This is Jamie Johnson, and I'm the government and uh, political correspondent for Western Wisconsin Journal. Today, my guest is Dr. Nick Olet, and we're on site here at the high school doing a video tour for our viewers. And uh, we're standing in a vacant room that's about to undergo some renovation. So, uh, Dr. Nick, what do we have uh, going on in this room? And this so happens to be right across from the temporary office. Yeah, so this, this room will, uh, is going to start renovation here in about uh, next weekend. We've moved out of this space. What they're waiting on is the window units over there, uh, the frames around the windows, the, the panels above, they have asbestos in them. And so uh, those need to be abated before they can go in and demol uh, demolition any of the other parts of this part of the room. Um, the thing is, is we, we could do asbestos abatement during the week uh, when kids are here because they seal everything off and it, it would be safe, but uh, we choose to, to do it on the weekends or at night when nobody's around. Uh, we can get our clean air readings and things like that. So uh, that way there's no, nobody wondering, okay, what exactly is going on and, and uh, you know, how come you're doing this while there's, there's kids in the building. So. so this looks like this was a science room? Yeah, this was a, this was a science room, yep, yep. And uh, it's going to be uh, converted to another use? So this room and the room next to it are going to be combined. Uh, and this will be ag sciences is what will happen. So this wall gets removed. This will become one larger room. There'll be a greenhouse right on the other side of that wall over there. There'll be an opening that's cut there. So uh, there'll be a hydroponics lab uh, in the space as well. So uh, it should be a really nice space for our, our uh, agricultural department to, to utilize. And this gives the viewers some idea of what the old looked like. And I think we're going to move on to what the new is going to look like. Yep. All right. Very good. Well, this would be considered the old part of the high yeah, school? Yeah, this is the old part of the high school. So what you're seeing here is, you know, the existing area, the lockers in the hall. Uh, the door areas have all been infilled with this old kind of wood, uh, dark wood. Not, not a very inviting situation. Um, and all of that's going to be opened up, uh, as you'll see in the next couple uh, moments. So this is where you'll be heading from the existing building into the new addition, this corridor through here. This will be a secondary corridor to help get kids in and out of cafeteria space. Um, what's interesting about this, uh, obviously the snow creates some challenges for us, but uh, what a lot of people don't get is when you look down, we're actually walking on Trazo that uh, hasn't been ground yet. So all the nice floors, that's how they start, and then eventually you know, they grind them and, and it looks uh, much, much better. So we just came out of an exterior door yep. from the uh, older part of the high school, and now this is the new construction. Yep. And uh, you're standing in what will be the locker bay. This is the locker, yeah, the locker bay here. We'll have uh, about 1,250 lockers down through here. This will be the main kind of arterial for the building. Um, the, uh, this will be sophomores, juniors, and senior lockers uh, all the way through here. There's a secondary locker bay uh, over in the northeast part of the building for freshmen in the freshman academy. So this is set up, at, uh, it's a two-story addition. Um, they, they mirror each other, both the upstairs and the downstairs are, are identical. Uh, right now we're in the phase they're getting finishes and, and things done, uh, starting to get things painted, ceilings are getting ready to go in. Um, one thing you can see over there above the, uh, where the uh, academic things start, you can start to see the bleacher board. That's our bleacher, uh, bleacher board from our old bleachers that's been, um, added to the ceilings, kind of soften it up, make it not so institutional looking. Uh, so it's kind of a neat, neat thing to be able to take the old bleachers from our gym and, and be able to uh, incorporate them into the new construction area. So these spaces are getting really close to being done. Um, the way this is set up, the uh, academic wings, the way these are set up is the hallways are on the outside, classrooms are on the inside. Every classroom has a set of corner uh, uh, glass sliding doors that opens up into soft spaces. Uh, lots of natural light was the key. Uh, lots of passive supervision so you can see out into the hallways and see what's going on. Um, so you can see it's a definitely a different look than what we just kind of came through. But a very similar concept even through the old part of the building is being remodeled so there'll be a lot more visibility between the rooms and the hall. So what we see out these windows that would be the exterior of what was the old junior high built in 1962. Yep, yep, that is the, uh, the old junior high. Uh, you can see some of those rooms have already started to be remodeled. They've redone the windows and, and uh, made those wider. Um, you know, as we're filming this on, what is it, April 16th today, and 
April 16th, one, yes, one, it's one not January, but April. <laughs> one of the lifts is, uh, is stuck in the snow, <laughs> it looks like, so it looks like that's probably gonna be here for a while until that But this will out. be a courtyard then in the area? This will between. be a courtyard. There'll be five courtyards in this building, um, and uh, they'll all be landscaped with pretty low maintenance types of uh, materials. So this is more of this kind of soft seating areas for kids uh, and teachers to open up their classrooms into this, uh, this area here. Uh, again, you can see the bleacher board ceilings. Um, one of the unique features of this building is every teacher will have a classroom and every teacher will have an office space. And what that allows us to do is grow within the walls of our building. So uh, as if our enrollment goes up, we're able to go into more of a community college style feel where teachers check out their classrooms and operate out of their offices more than operating out of their classrooms. Uh, and so we can really ramp up the capacity of this building, you know, with that, with that ability there. So you were saying that this will have basically some kind of sliding door? Yeah, glass two door. sliding doors. They'll follow that corner and it kind of, uh, they, they should be coming here in the next couple of weeks. So that'll be kind of a neat, neat thing to see those in. Uh, the teacher collaboration areas are kind of tucked back in between the two sets of hallways. Uh, these spaces right here, these are called small group instruction spaces or SGIs. There's 22 of them in the building. Uh, these, these SGI spaces are designed to be small conference rooms for kids to be able to check out, work collaboratively on projects, and, um, and just some different, different things. All the glass in this building, it's an energy efficient glass on the outside, and then on the inside, it's all double, uh, double pane um, safety glass on the inside. Well, you were mentioning on the glass, uh, Nick, uh, for the people that can see into the courtyard yep. here, um, is there a way to get into that courtyard area? Well, yeah, so there'll be doors to get into the different courtyards. There's actually a door right down there, uh, and there'll be doors in each of the vestibules as well. Uh, so we would anticipate that teachers will use the, court, uh, the courtyards as uh, extended class space and really be able to capitalize on that as well. This classroom has a, a movable wall, so this will be able to be two different teachers in here. But if they want to open up the walls, they'll be able to have one class with 50 kids kind of in both uh, uh, utilizing this space. So it should be a, it should be a real nice uh, collaborative space for some different types of team teaching and things along those lines. People can see, uh, you know, visually what the size, but what, what is the square footage of these spaces? And then when you combine them, it doubles, obviously. But. Yeah, I think our, our high school classrooms are between 850 and 950 square feet apiece, uh, regular classrooms, and then obviously the science labs are much bigger. So this, this room could comfortably uh, have 50 to 60 kids in it uh, in a different uh, variety of different formats. The furniture that's going into these spaces is flexible seating opportunities, so it can be uh, put together in groupings, so it can be work as, as, a, uh, as a group of kids working collaboratively together, or it could be set up in more of a lecture format, it just has a lot of different options. The goal of the whole project was flexibility, keeping things as flexible as possible so that we could continue to adjust as different needs uh, come up for us. All right. This is a se uh, secondary set of stairs. This will help you know handle some of the congestion so you don't have all the kids from the, these two academic wings needing to go towards that arterial. Uh, they'll be able to utilize this to go between the two dif uh, different levels. Um, as you can see, the plastic, we've been dealing with this plastic since, I don't know, <laughs> December. And uh, at the height of uh, construction, when it was really cold and we were primarily plastic than windows, we were running about 12 million BTUs an hour of natural gas and temporary heat. And so uh, it was a, uh, a spendy, spendy situation, but uh, now we're, we're much less than that as we are getting more and more. Because so, obviously this is before carpet and... So, you know, they're doing the lower level, that wing first, then they'll move to this level, then they'll go upstairs, and then the other one. So, uh, the goal is by the first part of May, we're able to move furniture in here. We won't be using the room, but we'll be able to move furniture in here. So we have to empty large parts of the building at the end of the school year uh, because they have a remodel happening this summer. Obviously, this space immediately in front of the high school has been used kind of as a area for the construction equipment and materials. This is our, our, our used lift lot, apparently. Okay. <laughs> but uh, no, this, is, this will be the plaza for the high school. Uh, it'll be the main entrance walking up to the building. 
You can see the outside of the rotunda there. Uh, it just got the glass in it. You start to see the tracks taking shape on the outside of the building, um, on the outside of the gym space. So, yeah, it, it, this should really be a neat, a neat focal point for the, for the building. And we expect this area to be the construction working spot until this fall? This will be done when we start school. So, yeah, but this will be basically under construction all the way until probably August. So you see they're getting the trazo down. This is all bags of rock and epoxy and things like that. They're getting the trazo down and they're moving out of some of those areas. The reason they're moving this way is because they want to start getting the ceilings in down there. Uh, and that gets like a wood ceiling up on the second story there. Okay. But it is going to be open to the second story. Yep. Yep. So this will be the new main entrance into the building right through here. Uh, they don't have all the walls up yet, obviously, but this will be a controlled main entrance. So two sets of doors have to go through the main office uh, if uh, to get in, uh, to get buzzed in. And so it'll be a controlled access. But this will be the entrance for performances on the weekend and so forth. Correct. Okay. Yep. This is the grand, grand staircase. This is part of the forum area. This area will be able to see between this area and what's behind the pink insulation there. We'll be able to see a little over a thousand students at, at round tables. Uh, this becomes kind of the cafeteria, the forum, a little bit of everything. Uh, kind of the cornerstone or the centerpiece of this space is the Google stairs or the Socratic steps, some people refer to them as, or even the grand staircase. Maybe we go over there and get a, a shot. Uh, the neat thing about this staircase is uh, it serves multiple functions, obviously uh, the ability to go upstairs to the media center, but uh, it also has a landing area that can serve as a, as a small stage as this wall is moved out of here. Uh, it also has different seating areas all the way up the stairs uh, for kids to be able to sit and hang out and uh, you know whether it be reading a book or be on a device or just hanging out with friends. So it kind of becomes that, that central point of the building. What you're looking at here is the rotunda, the inside of the rotunda area. The first floor is the office complex that would have everything from health services to uh, the principals and assistant principals, deans, um, our secretarial staff, and then also athletic offices and activities. Upstairs is called the uh, media center. So on the other side is the auditorium, and you'll see the auditorium entrance. Uh, there'll be two large screens on each side of the auditorium. I think they're 11 foot by 22 foot projection screens uh, that we'll be able to put different things up there, present presentations, because we'll be able to seat 1,500 to 2,000 people in rows of chairs in the common space for presentations and things along those lines. So this is the media center space we talked about. Um, the center spire, what's unique about the structure in here is that was all built piece by piece. The steel workers put that together, welded it in place, and then took the scaffolding down. Uh, it's both aesthetic and it's structural, so it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat component. Um, Along the top where the plastic is, that'll all be glass as well, letting lots of natural light in. And how did they get that centerpiece in? So the centerpiece uh, was lifted in place and all the other pieces were added to it uh, as far as piece by piece welded in place. And then once it was all in place, then they took the scaffolding down and it just held itself up there. So there'll be some different spaces. Those, uh, those smaller rooms over there will be more of those SGI rooms we talked about. The small group instruction spaces. There's a reading room over there as well, uh, uh, or a writing room. I'm sorry, writer's workshop room. Uh, the glass, like I said, just uh, going in here, it'll overlook the plaza area and the main entrance into the building. Um, should really be a unique space, uh, really a space that kids want to kind of gravitate towards and, and congregate in, and that's kind of our hopes. Off to the left here is uh, what's been called the reading room. It'll have a wall through there. It's kind of a uh, it'll be a meeting space for both the community and uh, for our kids and our staff. Uh, really a, a nice uh, piece of real estate on the project. Uh, it has a little bit different finishes than the rest of the building, but it looks, uh, uh, it has a little bit more of an upscale feel. The landing areas that are at different points uh, in the Locker Bay area, uh, those were designed, they're not just aesthetics, but um, because the buildings required to be broken down into smaller buildings for fire code, they actually serve a purpose. Uh, giant uh, steel doors will close all the way through there and be able to uh, separate off these, these different areas of the building. Um, the second one was there to kind of bring balance to the first one, uh, but there'll be soft seating areas, places for kids to hang out, 
Uh, just a just a, a nice complement to the upstairs area here. A little bit of ice. Yeah, not something you typically want to see in April. Uh, although it's a, it's quite the handrail, isn't it? <laughs> so this is the running walking track. This track is about six and a half laps to a mile. Eventually, it'll become an indoor track. It will be indoor eventually. There won't be snow in it. Um, so this track will be three lanes wide, three full-size lanes wide. Um, so they'll be able to do indoor track practice, things like that, when the weather's doing what it's doing outside. Same type of uh, stone and glass setup as the rest of the building over there. So it'll be that same, uh, that same design all the way through. The other thing that's unique about the track is it will... Um, uh, it'll be open to the gymnasium. You'll be able to look down from the track to the gym and uh, should create kind of an interesting space for our kids and our fans, uh, both on the track and down in the gym. All right, maybe we want to get our cameraman uh, to be able to look through this opening in the plastic. So this gym, uh, this is the extension of the gym box. To the right there is the old gym, uh, gym box where the wall uh, is going to be coming down here in probably about two weeks. They'll be taking that uh, that wall down, and so that'll be a neat neat experience to open all that up. So you have the new weight room facility, the track. It'll actually go down to the end and come around. Um, so this, this will be weight room in here. This will be one of the weight rooms, one of the two weight rooms. Okay. This is where the track will turn and cut through here. Uh, you can start to see. Right now they're working on patching in the floor because then the track comes through. Uh, looks like the geofoam, so that styrofoam there is called geofoam. They use that to bring the level of the floor up, so the floor in that space there has to come up about two and a half feet. So they put in a layer of styrofoam and then pour concrete on top of it. To be able to see, it'll be a nice view looking down into the stadium. Uh, on Friday it was blue and green, and today it's white. Uh, this is April 16th. Hopefully we don't have too many April 16th where this is the view, but yeah. this is from the running track then on the south side. Yes. Yeah, this will be the main office area. You walk through. I mean, we can do a walk around it. Um, so the, uh, the circles kind of carry all the way through. In this uh, area, this will be a, a main reception area, seating area through here. There will be several secretaries back in this area. Um, and then different offices. Our school resource officer will be close to the front door so they can see what's going on. Some conference room space. There'll be some additional conference rooms through here. Uh, uh, some assistant principal space. The principal's office, I believe, is right back through here. Um, and it just kind of keeps curving around. This area here will be kind of a kitchenette area. We'll be able to set up with a sink and things along those lines. Um, some different spaces through here. Athletic directors. Uh, secretary and then I think the athletic director's office is over here. Uh, so what you see up on the ceiling there that's fireproofing material so that's all part of uh, you know our requirement to break the building into smaller sections and then and so on each side of a firewall for a certain amount of feet uh, all the steel structure has to be able to survive a two-hour fire without without losing its structural integrity. So, so the that, steel has to be fireproofed. The steel has to be fireproofed because steel does not do well in a fire. It usually, if it gets really hot, it tends to lose all its structural properties. This space to our right was the old uh, media center space. So this is one of the first places that got uh, kind of demolished. And then we've since then, hey, uh, since then we put up some temporary walls and used it for cafeteria space along with some of the old existing cafeteria but about half the existing cafeteria was turned into choir room space. So what's interesting is the floors started out like this and they turned out like this. So it's been kind of a neat space. Nice. This is the new choir space that's been remodeled. And this would be considered polished concrete? This is polished concrete, yep. So they did a nice job with this. This is very durable, kind of lasts forever. So this space has been all new, all remodeled, uh, a lot more natural light. Um, this is the old north end of the cafeteria. Old north end of the cafeteria, yep. Is this room large so, enough for the largest of the choirs? I believe so. Yep. This has got to be about twice the size of the old choir room. So this is, this is a pretty big structure. So, is there a special soundproofing in here? Yep, yep. All the acoustical treatments, uh, both uh, 
you know, up in the ceiling. And then also there's these, these different things that are sticking down from the, the ceiling clouds uh, allow the sound to play, I guess, a little differently in here. Uh, you have sound panels up along the tops of the walls and then uh, different sound, sound and, treatments along the... Uh, and that even is on the walls here in these... Uh, even in the, in the practice room. So that's designed with the practice rooms to um, absorb sound so it doesn't get too loud in there. So somebody right now is plugging away at a piano and you can hardly hear it. Yep. So we extended the scene shop uh, off the auditorium to add more space for um, the uh, uh, theatrics or theatrical uh, plays and things along those lines. Um, so this, this addition's come off there. Uh, they're just getting the metal panel on the outside of the space and that's turning out nice. Uh, they have some treatment they have to do around the corners and things like that, but uh, this has been much needed space uh, to add to the auditorium. So. And all this tile comes up? This all comes off. This will get terrazzo through here. All this gets terrazzo through here. So this is on the other side of that temporary wall that we saw. Um, to the left is the auditorium. Um, and, and so this, where would those large screens go? Those large screens will go up on this wall here. There'll be one on this side. There'll be one over on that side. So the auditorium space has all been remodeled, new acoustical treatments, um, and uh, the ceilings and the lighting and the sound and everything else. So it's really been a, it's really been a nice space. So all the lighting, all the sound was replaced. Yeah. So the majority of the power for this building is actually comes from over in the northeast corner. And so all this, all this conduit is running to feed the rest of the building. So they've had to run all this new conduit here to get power to the different. That's what the copper is? Or is that? No, that's water lines. This is conduit right okay. here. Okay. Obviously the new band room. I believe it's courtyard two when this is all said and done. This will be a neat seating area for kids to come out. And part of the reason we have so many courtyards is because the building's so big. In order to bring natural light into different spaces of the building, you just end up with these uh, these courtyards that are. But this will have the doors will remain and be accessible. Yeah, this will be accessible. And also. what we're looking at over there is that where the store is? School store, yep, is over that way, concession stand, and then the cafe is just off to our right. Now we're getting into kind of the part of the building that really hasn't been remodeled yet. Um, this is the big bulk of this remodel all happens in about uh, oh, in a couple, about a month is when this is all going to start. We had a challenge where we had to figure out how to get kids to the gym since we cut off their access that way. So what we did is we cut a hole in the side of this office right here. It used to be a window like this. Created a hallway through the counseling office to get kids safely back into the gym so they can utilize that space while school is still going on. Are we going to go? So these be the, this used to be the old common space. This used to be where the trophy case was. Yeah, the trophy case used to be out through here. Now they're building the bathrooms below and mechanical mezzanine above. And in there, what you're seeing is they're getting ready to take all, all these tees out. And uh, they're also building the scaffolding. Uh, so what has to happen is they have to cut these into smaller pieces and then lift them out with a crane, I believe. So by tees, it's that wall there. That wall stays, but these up, these ceilings up here. Okay, it comes out. So is there already they've ceiling already, above They've it? already started taking the ceiling out over there. They kind of brace it all the way through. They've cut down the middle. You can see they cut those out, and they'll start plop, they'll start taking those. They'll start taking all this ceiling out here. Those were the old bathrooms. You can see the old tiles still on there to some extent. So, What's happening right now, the reason there's string line on, these string lines symbolize the walls. So the plumbers are coming in, putting all their stuff in the ground. So they got to know where the walls are so they can measure out where the fixtures are going to go and the sinks and everything else. So um, they're working to get those. 
on a on an average day right now, we I think we have between 170 and 180 people on site right now. Uh, this summer, I think it ramps up to 280 uh, folks on site. So, a uh, lot of a uh, lot of work going on on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, just give us a picture of where we're at. This is where the ramp that divides the two stories in yep. what was considered the high school and built in around 74. Yep. And so everything here to the left on the other side is lift. This all comes out. All these walls get demolished out. Ceilings go up. This becomes a STEM common space. STEM common space? STEM, STEM commons. And then on the other side of this uh, temporary wall right here is the AV studio. Um, as we come through here, They've been doing some demolition. Um, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So they started demolishing the old choir spaces. And this is the old choir room. Or no, I'm sorry, the old orchestra room. So this used to have a sunken orchestra pit. And they filled it with geofoam. And then they poured a new slab over top, as you can see. They filled it in so that it's all at one level. In between this space, or this, this will be the orchestra room, but they wanted it all on one level. Uh, there's also some skylights that get cut into this, I believe, uh, that get some natural light into this space as well. So everything looks really low along the wall. It's because the, the floor used to be much lower. So that will all come off when they, when they get everything demoed. So this was the old choir room. So they went from the space we saw earlier, uh, or they, they went from this space to that, old, or to that new space. So... They had no natural light, pretty small area. Uh, they were just in here with these. These are uh, the one on the right is a demolition robot. Uh, so they use that to uh, bust out all the old uh, risers that were built in, and then uh, then the the, the small uh, piece of equipment there to kind of haul it away and get it out of here. But uh, what will this room become? This will actually become uh, the project lead the way uh, space, and this wall to the to the so or to the east here, this wall gets torn out and this is all project lead the way space all the way out to about where that would and project lead the way space. is primarily engineering yeah it's engineering courses yep absolutely so as far as uh, the new construction what's going to be built is pretty much all get framed in mm -hmm. we're not adding any more uh, square feet so to speak in that but as far as the remodel we're not even a third of the way done with the demo of the remodel would yeah you say? I mean the big push is this summer on the remodel I mean the, the, the bulk of the work uh, for the remodels this coming summer. That's why it's four months long. It's a long summer. Uh, it's the whole east wing gets totally demolished. Every wall gets torn out of there. The only thing that stands is the pillars that hold up the roof and then it totally gets rebuilt back up. So it'll be a, like a brand new space. What are those little ledges going to be for? I don't know. They're just kind of there. I think we're going to do we're going to do some art display in there and um, um, and this is the area that was first remodeled, the very first Yeah, work. first remodeled last summer. So this is uh, the commercial kitchen uh, for our culinary arts students. And so this has been remodeled and has turned out, uh, has turned out nice. And you see a lot of natural light and, and things like that. Um, now talk about the carpet. Why is there carpet on that end of the hall? So that's called walk-off walk carpet. And the walk-off carpet is for when people are walking in and out with uh, wet or snowy shoes. That carpet's designed to kind of knock it off the shoes on the way in, but then it's a real durable carpet, so it can handle the salt and it can handle the sand and all the other wet that comes with it. To your right here, this is our temporary library right now. So in the end, it'll be a storage space, uh, but we've converted it to library space uh, for a year. Uh, the media center librarian uh, has done an outstanding job of being flexible and, and working and dealing with the space. So. So you can start to see what the difference that the hallways look, you know, the existing and how dark and, and kind of gloomy it was compared to uh, what it's going to be like when it's done. So you can definitely tell the difference in the amount of light in the hallways and, and the type of light as we work our way through. Is this LED? Everything's LED in the building. Yep, the whole, the whole building is LED. Or will be LED when it's, when it's fully remodeled. So... So. Well, Dr. Nick, thank you for taking us around Absolutely. the high school. Thank and you. Uh, thank you for watching another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal.